How's it going everyone? It's Cody B Pyrotechnics and today we're going to be showing you how to repurpose your Excalibur firework tubes from the 24 shell mortar kits. Now for those of you who don't know, this is what the Excalibur tube looks like. So it's a nice high density polyethylene tube. These are not like your fiberglass tubes and that is why we need to find a way to repurpose these things because you don't just want to use these one and done kind of thing on the fourth. Especially, check it out, the base plug is actually molded right onto the tube. So I imagine when they make these things in China or America, wherever they make them, this whole thing is a press. And so they press that plug in. You'll see there's no wood down there. I don't know if you can see that, but most of the time when you order tubes on the internet, it comes with a wooden plug, but here it's just an HDPE plug molded right onto the thing. There's a couple ways to repurpose these and we're gonna show you all three. So we're gonna show you everything that you will need to make these racks in the following video. Now, if you plan on making all three racks that I'm going to show you today, you're going to need some supplies and I'm gonna show you everything you need right now. So obviously you're gonna need some HDPE Excalibur mortar tubes. And if we open up this tote, you can see I have a bunch of them in here. I just collect these things over the years as I get the kits. And I think uh, the oldest tube in here is probably from 2015. So I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time. So obviously we're gonna be working with saws and drills today. You wanna to protect your hands. So I would have some gloves, especially working with wood. You don't wanna get a sliver. And we're gonna be cutting some bases off of these things. So be careful about that. You're gonna want some sort of eye protection. Again, we'll be working with a table saw, but you don't need one. So I'll give you some alternatives later on. So this part here is optional, but you can buy some handles from Menards to make it easier for you to carry these racks. You definitely do not need to pick these up because I've got different sizes here, but this is optional. So if you wanna be able to just carry them here on your side, you might wanna pick up some handles. This is also 100% optional. You do not need a sander to build these racks, but if you want them to look nice and pretty, you could totally use a sander to get rid of that excess wood on the end. We are definitely gonna need some wood screws for this. I don't know how many are in this bag, but uh, these are like repurposed screws from old projects. So you're just gonna want like a bag of these things. So this part is also completely optional, but I'm not a fan of this yellow sticker up here. So we're actually gonna be replacing each one with a nice 1.4 logo sticker. You guys are gonna need a vise to hold down your tubes while you're drilling, and we'll show you the drill bits that you need. So for the part where we're gonna be drilling into the bases of these tubes, you're gonna need a three and an eighth inch hole saw. And then for the arbor you want, if you're using the master force, you want the number two or the number three. Right now I've got the number three in there, but they both do the same job. Now you might be wondering, well, how do you get this drill bit out? So there's actually a thing, a little thing on the side, I'll show you that. And you just have to unscrew that and you can pull that out because you don't wanna be drilling a hole into the bottom of the tube. So I'll give you an example. Like obviously this comes around like that. We've got the sleeve there on the end of the tube. So that's where we bring it up to, but we don't want, you know, we don't want that to be going into the bottom of this, or we're going to lose a bunch of pressure there in the bottom. So to avoid that, we just take the drill bit out altogether so that the only attachment is this, the hole saw. Now I didn't know what size to get, so I got this one too. This is two and a half inch and we'll show you why I thought we might need to use that because it is the exact same size as the outside diameter of the Excalibur tube, you see that? But it doesn't really work down here and I definitely don't wanna be cutting into that base on the bottom. And obviously we're gonna be using a table saw to cut the wood, but you do not need to go out and buy one of these. I know they're expensive. So you could also use a circular saw, a jigsaw, or even a sawzall. If you just, are, you're just gonna be cutting wood here down a straight line. So that's why we're gonna use the table saw. And now we're just gonna show you what kind of wood you'll need. So believe it or not, for all three of these racks, you're only gonna need three different types of boards and you can cut these babies down, make all sorts of racks. So the first one, you get all three of these at Menards, by the way. This is a one by eight by four. Get a close up of that sticker there so they know exactly which one. You can probably screenshot that, have them scan it at Menards and they'll show you exactly where this board is. This one we're gonna be using for our bases and probably our sides of the rack once we get it cut down. This one here is for the slide technique. We're gonna show you how we do all this um, in just a minute, but you're gonna need a couple like this. So I'd probably pick up two of these and then I'd get like six of these if you're gonna make multiple racks. Like I'm definitely gonna need six. So I got like six of these and you're gonna need like six of these too. So this is what this one is. Here, we'll get a shot of that. One by two by four. What was this one? Quarter of an inch by two by four. 
So yeah, those are the only three boards that you need. And we're gonna be able to make all three of our mortar racks today using only these boards. So I'm just gonna demonstrate how to cut the bottoms off. Like I said, we do not wanna remove this sleeve here. It gives you a lot of further protection. There's not gonna be a lot of spacing on the rack. So we wanna leave that sleeve on, because then if we have a shell blow in the tube, it won't be as bad as it would if you took that sleeve off. So we're just gonna drill here in the bottom, just like this. Might get kind of stuck, because we're working with high density polyethylene, but Basically, it should look like that, and you can choose to either sand all this stuff off or just leave it. We don't really care if it looks pretty. Um, the only, like I said, the only thing I'm gonna do to these tubes other than cut the bases off is put that sticker on the top. So just like that, you've got your base removed. Easy enough, just the, uh, what was this, three, three and an eighth. Just stick that there on the end of a drill and you're good. So with all these Excalibur tubes that we drilled the base off of that look like that, we were actually able to put inside of a six shot mortar rack. Now this is what I've done and I'll show you the dimensions here in just a moment. And this is pretty sloppy in the way it's put together. Like obviously I only have one screw on each board, but just kind of threw it together to give you an idea as to how that's gonna look. Now this will be kind of like the test rack because obviously the other ones that I'm gonna be building, I want them to look a little prettier, but there's no real dimensions for a rack like this, so I kind of had to wing everything. So I'll show you what I did. But first I wanna talk about where these handles could come in handy. So now we're looking at the rack from the side. You see the baseboard here, that's for stabilization so it doesn't tip. But uh, you can see it's a little off on this size handle, so you may have to get a smaller one. But I was thinking you could just do something like this. So you could literally mount these handles on the sides of the rack and then you'd be able to pick it up like that. For me on this one, since this is kind of the sloppy test one, uh, we're just gonna be picking it up like that out in the field. So that's what it's relatively gonna look like. Um, I do wanna measure everything for you. You can see we did make some mistakes while putting this together. So let's get you a measurement on these four side support panels. So that one is gonna be, here I'll come like this. So these were the little slivers of poplar, uh, not the smaller of the two, but the larger of the two. So that one there, I cut it to 19 and a half inches. And obviously there's your side measurement. You may have to get a little closer to show that. Um, and yeah, just an inch up here. So you're gonna be cutting four exact same size boards like that um, because one of them is, see, I've only got one screw down here. I was gonna put another one in, but before I do that, I wanted to show you the rack. Um, so this one here is kind of hidden, but it's the same dimension as this one here. Now, if we flip it upside down, hopefully these tubes don't come out. Uh, the base plate is a little bit different. So let's measure that for you. And uh, this would have been, you know, so this is 19 and a half inches long. And this would have been the largest piece of wood that we showed you out of the three. So we cut that to 19 and a half by four and a quarter. And you might have to play around with these measurements. I know wood is not cheap right now, so that's kind of why I'm testing it out for you. But basically with the sleeves being left on, we were able to get them in there with those measurements. And now the side, the sides here, let's get a shot of these. So what I've done is I've turned one of the stabilizers up, so we only put one screw in so that I could show you this board here, which we're gonna measure that. So these would be your side plates. That is gonna be, nine and three quarter inch. So looks like that and then how wide. So that's gonna be by three inches. So again, I'll show that one more time. So nine and three quarters ish. Again, you're gonna to have to play around with it by three inches exactly. Like three inches on the dot. So anyway, the base plates, I don't know if we measured these, but we'll take a look here. I gotta keep, I gotta show it this way. So that's nine and a half exactly by four and a quarter. So that's your base plate. And we're definitely gonna put another screw in on the bottom, but those are the measurements. So you're gonna need two of these, two of these, four of these, and one bottom base plate. So anyway, that is an example of what you can do with these Excalibur tubes that you get from the 4th of July. 
you know, all these kits, you save these tubes. The fiberglass ones are okay too, but these are really solid. So these are gonna last you years. Um, but this is an example of what you can do with the bottom cutoff. Now there's two other variations that I wanna show you. And so we're gonna get to that right now. So now we're gonna show you another rack design using six of the Excalibur tubes, but this time I'll be showing you the slide method. So to set up a rack like this, we will be using two of these and uh, pretty much what I'm gonna do here is put them parallel to the tubes. So why don't we get an up close shot of this? So it's gonna look roughly something like that, okay? Then with these much smaller slivers, let's get you a shot of that. Remember, I've got two of these. We're gonna create a lip on the side. And so that lip is gonna look something like this. Now there will be a screw going through this and into this one and further down into the base. Okay, so the idea here is to make a rack without having to cut the bases off of the tubes, and then it gives you the ability to slide them out like that. Now I do understand that we do not want these tubes to be able to leave the rack while they're going off. And so to get around that, I've actually got an idea. So to get this rack stable enough where the individual tubes aren't sliding back and forth, on one side of the rack, I'm gonna add a stopper. So that stopper is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be in here, something like that. And what that's gonna do is allow you to carry the rack from one end, so you'll be carrying it like this, and I'll get you a shot of what I'm talking about later. But the tubes will not slide out the bottom of the rack, so they only have one way to get in and out of the rack. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did with that other rack and just cut all these boards up to kind of how I want them. Again, there's no real dimensions for any of this stuff, so I'm totally winging it. You know, these tubes, they kind of vary in how they're set up. Like one will be a quarter of an inch wider than the next one. So we're really gonna try here. But once I get all that done and all the wood cut, I'll get back to you. All right, so this is the slide that I was talking about. And um, if we can get a shot down in there, here's our stopper on the back. And so to give you an example of how this works is each of these tubes all the way up to six are gonna slide down all the way to the end. And you see, they don't come out of there. You can put it upside down and everything. So we're gonna get all six loaded up, show you what that looks like, and then I'll give you the measurements on each piece of wood. So this is what the rack looks like fully loaded. As you can see, I got all six tubes in there. Not a single one is gonna fall out unless I angle it that way. So, I mean, you could put a stop down here on this end as well, but I don't really think it's necessary because if you want to you know, reload these tubes or let's say you had a bad one that blew on the ground, you'd have to pull it out and uh, reattach that. But you could put like a base plate here on the side for stabilization, but either way, that's what the slide technique looks like. And for the stabilizers, I'm gonna put them on the bottom of the rack. So this thing will be elevated off the ground a little bit, but it will still be stable and you don't have to worry about them tipping over. So these two boards here will work nicely for stabilizers. And so basically off camera, I'm going to attach them to the bottom. Just use a small little screw so it doesn't come up into the rack. But yeah, they'll just be attached something like that and that will stabilize them. There's no way that this thing's gonna tip over. As you can see though, right here, we did have the wood split a little bit. So be mindful of that on these smaller guys that we use for the lip so that we can create that slide mechanism. They gotta be kind of slimmer. You could use another thicker board like that, but I didn't really wanna chance it. So I went with the smaller lip, but yeah, it works just like that. So the nice thing about this slide rack is that lengthwise, all the boards are gonna be the same. So we only have to measure one here. And as you can see, that's gonna be 29 and a half. I left a little bit of room here, so you could probably go 29 even if you wanted to, but I left room here in case I did wanna put a second stopper down here. Don't think I'm going to, because I like the, the ability to slide these things out. So I kinda like that. Um, but yeah, everything here is gonna be 29 and a half inches, and that includes the board on the bottom, the two lips, and the two sideboards here. So in total, this is five pieces of wood, all the same length. Uh, let's take a look, and uh, these are the same width too. The lip and that one, they're the same width, but the one on the bottom, let's take a look. That's gonna be seven and a quarter. So seven and a quarter there on the bottom is how wide you wanna go. Uh, again, I just kinda winged it off the top of my head with a pencil, you know, I drew where you can see these lines here. I actually just drew where I think the bases of these tubes are gonna go, and it worked out pretty good. So the third and final rack is more of an effect-based rack. So this is when you're gonna be using comet shells or mine shells, and you wanna get a nice spread on them when they go up in the air. And oftentimes you can get 
three hits on the Cobra, so like three cues can go into one hit, and that would be each of these shells. So what we're gonna do here is actually use the base on the tube in the middle to create a slight angle. Now this slight angle is gonna look way more spread out up in the air when the shells do reach that height. However, if you guys wanted more of a dramatic angle, and we're talking like this will really put those shells out there, you could take two pieces of board like this and you could put them on there like that and that'll definitely give it way more of an angle. I think for me that's almost too much. So I just like to use the base on the actual tube itself, put it on there like that. And the way we're gonna do this is really just screw these things down to the board and put two bases underneath to help stabilize it. So here we go. So on this rack, uh, we wanna use a bit of a longer screw like that. On the slide rack, I used a bit shorter of a screw so it came down to about right here. But on this one, we really want it to go through the two bases and into the wood. Uh, so I'm just gonna drill a hole right there and we'll put the screw in. So the first thing we're gonna do is secure the tube in the middle. We wanna put that one in first so we have something to work with that's already attached to the board. I'm gonna drop that one out. And we'll put our screw about that far in. I don't want it to come through the board just yet until I get those base plates on there because when you pick this thing up, it might go right through your finger. So now that we've got the first screw in, so what I'm gonna do here is just get this base plate attached. Uh, we'll get two on either side here. And the reason we wanna get that on right away is so that we can put this screw all the way down into the board. So, because check it out, this is the problem we're having right now. So I need that screw to be all the way in uh, before we attach the two that are gonna be of an angle. So I'm gonna get these attached real quick. All right, we got the screw in the first one and these I'm not worried about. I can send them all the way down because they're not gonna go through that second board on the bottom. But now that we've got it like that, we can safely work with this thing and obviously we'll secure those later. Um, but now we can actually just send this all the way through and we can get the other ones on there, but check it out. The reason why we do that is so that you don't have to pick it up from down here. You can just go ahead and grab it by the handles and you're pretty safe for the time being. So now it's just a matter of getting these on here like that. So we're on the back side of the rack right now and I wanna make a hole here and go straight through the one that's angled and straight through the one in the middle. And we do that because there's already a screw on this side. So, so we'll just toss that screw in like that and get it drilled in. Just like this. So there you go, you got two that are attached to the board. This one's coming out and we still have to secure that one. So let's get that one in right away. So part of the reason that we're not putting more screws in the middle one is because these ones on the side are actually helping to stabilize it already. So we wanna put the other hole like right here, go straight through the base and straight into the board. And just like that, we've now got three tubes attached to the board. It's gonna look like that. You can see it holds it nicely with even only being three screws holding these things down. Um, remember how I just said that if you reach under the rack, well, I just poked my finger real nice and good. So that's why you wanna make sure that you're picking it up like this. Uh, surprisingly, on the angled ones, it didn't go all the way through and I kind of figured that would happen. Uh, so now this part's optional, but if you really wanted to be safe, you could put screws in on all four sides of this thing. But I really don't think, you know, this is going anywhere. I'll probably put another screw in over here, maybe one more down here and we should be good to go. So the only thing left to do really is add these nice one four stickers. Look at that. So it's a bit crooked. Sorry, I'm doing this upside down. Um, but we'll get three of them on here for you just to show you what that would look like, the final touch. And then we'll give you a little recap of everything we did here. So let me just get these stickers on real quick. All right, got the final sticker on there. Um, I'm gonna put stickers on the rest of them later on, but if we did that on camera, it would take forever. So check it out. Anyway, we have the three shot effect style rack. We have the bases removed classic six shot mortar rack here. This is your classic setup. Again, we did not really stabilize um, the stabilization plates here or on this one, they still kind of move, but those are relatively easy and you don't really need real dimensions on those. They just have to stick out farther than the rack to prevent it from tipping over. And then the last rack here, another six shotter, this we use the slide method. So in total, we have three different style of mortar racks here. Depending on how many tubes you have, you might want to go even bigger. Like you could definitely do that in a 12 shot rack 
just take all the dimensions times two if you really wanted to. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'd love to go test one of these out for you, but it's gonna be super windy tonight and all the snow that we have melted. So anyway, this is just kind of like a how-to on repurposing your Excalibur tubes because I know we get a lot of them throughout the year. Hope you enjoyed. I got chickens over here on the right. Let's get a shot of that. So they, they like the mortar racks. They already told me. And we'll see you guys next time. That was sweet. I hope you got that on video. Okay. As you can get all three at Walmart. Fucking Menards. Yeah. Fucking Menards. You can't buy wood at Walmart. <laughs>